From growing up singing for her parents in their living room to performing for thousands of fans at Lollapalooza, New York City native Hayes Warner is steadily checking dreams off her bucket list. This is The Spout Podcast, where famous people spout off about more than what they're famous for. And today, that's Hayes Warner. Hayes Warner. Hi. I've heard so much about you. Thank you. I have I've not heard heard much about you. Oh, you have? Yeah. Shit, that's a good lie. <laughs> no. You have it. I appreciate it. Um, did you go to school at Northwestern? I did, so yeah. So you're kind of home for like a little pseudo second higher. I am. This is my first time back. Yeah. Since crazy, graduating. yeah. Wow. And you're playing Lollapalooza. No big deal. No, I, I, I got kind of emotional on O'Hare. Like I, I started really? to, to tear up because I remember leaving, you know, after graduation, and I was like, I want to be a singer songwriter. I don't know how to do it, and right. I just was like freaked out about life. And to be coming back to O'Hare, sure. you know, to play Lollapalooza was crazy. You're it probably was crazy. one of like three artists I've ever talked to that's like O'Hare makes me emotional yeah. in a good positive Wait, way. Wait, what is it about? I don't know what it is. Because people, I don't know. I, they, they choose their airports. It's okay. that's a JFK yeah. versus New. Work thing, same thing in New yeah. York. And, yeah, I've never been emotional in the airport. Mm. I actually have a song called Airport. Wow, a sad song called Airport. We'll there have we to go. make a new happy yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> new airport. <laughs> Speaking of Predator, seven days out since this music video came out, the visualizer yep. for it. Watch me, stalk me like a predator. I'm not your competitor, but I get it. I was that girl to the girl before? Me. Wow. It's intense. Thank you. It's terrifying Thank in the best you. way possible. Good. I, I did some some feral crawling. The feral yeah. crawling, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can we talk about that scene? So you're crawling across a long mm -hmm. dinner table. Yeah. How much blocking did that take? One shot and done. No I'm not way. even exaggerating. Like everyone at the table is my I don't friend. I swear. I have. I don't BTS. believe you. Everyone at the table is my friend. Okay. You know, like when you do a music video, we're, we're sure. You know, it's not like casted. You know, oh, actors please. and actresses. Like we're, yeah. no, it's okay. just like trying to, you know. Rally You're everyone. yelling at them. Yeah, like, I'm like, don't screw this up. I'm a wasting like, film. Izzy, drink your water. No, I'm kidding. I'm not like that. But I was like, don't let me step on it. We just did it. Nice. Yeah. And I, if if it was bad, it was bad. Yeah. But it, it wasn't bad. <laughs> I think you pulled it off pretty well. This song's yeah, no, incredible. It was great. Thank you so right. much. It's just one of. I mean, it, it's aggressive. It's anthemic. Yeah. Thank you. Makes you, you want to sing. Are great a lot. adjectives. I'm like gonna write them down. I, I'm, I'm trying to pull but up more like, now. That, you complimented that. Sound. I'm like. Aggressive anthemic. If, what artist inspired you in your career? No, we're not doing like, that. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd be down. No. But let's talk. Okay, let's let's rephrase that okay, question okay. a little bit. Um, if you were to go to like a record store way okay. back when those were a thing, okay. and someone was looking for Hayes Warner, what two artist albums would they be behind? Not necessarily mm. artists entirely, but albums. Okay. Okay. Uh, I do really love aggressive female vocalists. Sure. And when I say aggressive, I just mean like, in your face live performance, like songs that translate to a live performance yeah. that aren't just like hype. Mm -hmm. I love Haley Williams. Yeah. So like Paramore, Paramore, I love it. Um and then I'd say anything kind of like a like a darker anthemic song. I, I don't know if you know the band Paris, like P V R S. I love them. Incredible. Um, it just there's just a there's a there's a lot. I love Blondie, I love Joan Jett, I love aggressive, you know. Do you know anything about Stan Atlantic? I, I've heard of them. I, you, well, if you're like that, Vin, them. you should check out Santa Lara. Really? Yeah, yeah. Wait, I'm I, I getting good. I feel like good, I know what you're I'm looking for. I'm getting good artist yes. recs. Okay, good. I, like, we'll write them if down. If you have more, write them I'll down. write the adjectives getting, down. I'm I'll write the recs this down. I'm getting more than you are, actually. Um, so the visuals, though, and I, you know, I, from the Just a Girl visualizer to, you know, breadcrumbs, I love that it's going to sound tripe because everyone's like, well, yeah, a music video should tell a story. But I feel like so many music videos now don't have that through line. Um, it's kind of what's the coolest look we can get or, yeah, you yeah. know, if you're going for I that live cool appearance. Look. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, keep going. Keep yeah. going. But what, so when you're, when you are thinking of a song or you're writing or recording, are the visuals coming to mind in that time or is it something that's after the fact? If you've ever had a thought of how can I sell something, uh, especially on the internet, which was 100% me when I got into all this media stuff, one word for you, Shopify. If you're selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. It's the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business from the very beginning, launch your online shop stage to the real life store stage, all the way up to the, I'm sorry, did we just hit 1 million orders stage? Yeah, Shopify can handle all of that. Not to mention, it's there to fit whatever your product needs are. It's an all-in-one e-commerce platform. You've got an in-person POS system, so wherever you're selling, however you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Oh, and not to mention Shopify Magic, their AI-powered all-star that just makes everything a little bit easier, a little less work for you to do. As if Shopify wasn't already helping you enough, you've got Shopify Magic helping you out too. Now let's go over a couple of the big stats for a second, can we? It's the internet's best converting checkout platform 
period. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. It also powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US. Think about that for a second. How many websites that sell stuff? Shopify has 10% of them in the US. So whether you're starting a business, growing a business, or just stressed out by your business, perhaps all of the above, Shopify is the answer. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash spout all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash spout now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash spout. Totally. I mean, when I when it comes to a, a music video, I, I kind of already know what I want and what I want it to look like um, when the song's done. And sure. or as we're creating it, you know, like yeah. for me, Predator, I just was like, I feel like we're in a restaurant and no one's paying attention to me and I'm just going crazy and feral. and I'm, I'm going feral yes. like that that's basically what it is and and we've I found someone that knew someone that had a restaurant that was like sure you can film here as long as you tag us and I was like I will tag you Say a less. million times yes. yeah. sure um and so just me running around a restaurant which is what I was thinking when I wrote that song do you ever see so. yourself like b cam the third person like if you're walking down the street with a friend, can you kind of picture how that would look if it was a sitcom or no? Uh, can you? Yeah. Yeah, that's not something I can do. Okay. That's... Maybe for the future, I'll, I'll try. Oh, right now, some maybe. people some people see themselves, see you know, themselves from that third. Through, but that's I'm an living as a main character in a movie called Me, so that's you know. Great. See, sometimes I'm like, are we all Sims and like, what am, what am I? Non-playable Where characters. Am I? Yeah, yeah, I feel like sometimes you, you are like, in Chicago. Okay. You are playing Lollapalooza. There we go. Tomorrow. I I do have to say. Yeah. I was, everyone was sweating. It was so hot out there. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I was not sweating. Like, I really? think my body is in a state of shock from the fact that we're at Lollapalooza right now. That's so, so cool. Yeah. Which you've attended Lala as a guest before. <laughs> Any doctors out there, let me know what's going on. <laughs> am, like, I, am I okay? Okay. Adrenaline. I think I'm, yes. Honestly, mm -hmm. I think I just have so much adrenaline right now. Yeah. Maybe I'll like pass out at the end I of think, the weekend. I, we, but I don't think you'll be fine. It's fine. You're a professional fine. and you're going right back on tour right after. I, I am. So yeah. I got to ask the due diligence question. What's on the way? What's on the way? Yes. This is it. This is the end. This is it. This is all. <laughs> Get it while you can now. Yeah, I know. We're done. Yeah. Um, No, I am so excited for the end of this year. I am going on tour with amazing band Crash Adams. Mm -hmm. Love them. Starting the 11th of August. Okay. In Cambridge. Nice. Um, And then this next batch of music is like when I released Predator and when I wrote Predator, I was like, this is what I want to be as an artist. Like, right. this is what I want my sound to be. So this next EP is just like that. Yeah. Um, and it's, I have another single coming out in a few weeks and then followed by a single with an EP, so. Do you, as someone that's obviously wanted yeah. to do this for a while, I would imagine, yeah. um, for to see it happening in real time, has gotta be the coolest feeling in the world. Do you, do you find yourself having trouble living in the moment and experiencing it or totally. is it? Okay. I was just talking to this my, with my dad. Like, I'm so excited, but it feels like so many baby steps. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's hard to even un acknowledge what's going on until you have like a milestone like Lollapalooza where yeah. you're like, wait, this was a lot of hard work and a lot of steps back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's always fun when you see like the up and, up and coming star. Yeah, or, you up know. and then down yes. and up and down and up and down. But like to have a milestone like Lollapalooza to be like, wait, we're actually doing something. You're like, counting the Lego bricks that went yeah. into building it, it, it was, that's kind of why this is, really emotional but well, it is it is a cool it's a cool i don't even remember what the question was but that, that's that's what <laughs> living i mean in the moment you know yes yeah like it's 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 i've been living in the moment this weekend because mm -hmm. it's like this is actually crazy yeah yeah other times it just feels like you know okay great moment little moment back little yeah. step forward but yeah i'm trying to live in the moment now uh looking towards the future a little bit yeah obviously big and better things bigger and better things on the way um i would imagine at some point and you don't have to blink to confirm or anything okay. but we're just we're making assumptions here headlining tour on the way uh, i'm seeing madison square garden i'm okay. seeing crypto center crypto.com whatever i don't know staples crypto yeah. but yeah. yes all the big things uh, uh and you've got this this massive just in your face sound that is so um, tangible thank literally you. thank you what kind of stage production are we looking at? Do we have fire? Oh my God, I want fire. Yes. Oh my God, so see fire yeah. and us, I want to be on fire. No, I'm no. Just <laughs> okay. Walk it back just a little bit. Fire works. Yes. No, I I would, I come from like, I really appreciate musical theater, you know? Sure. And just like the production that goes into those. Like yes. I want every bit of the show to be like thought out, telling a story like sure. you were saying about just fire. Yeah. Uh, Exactly. Fly lines. Fly I mean, lines. I'm going to be pink. You, you, I'm gonna, you, there have you go. seen pink? Yes. 
like that. Yeah. It's an, it's, I don't know if I can fly like that. It's almost disrespectful because I'm like, she's not human. She's no, not, she, <laughs> she's not of my species. At my least. mom loves her. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and like has tried to, you know, get me. I thought you were going to say has tried to fly wire. <laughs> no. Damn, your mom's no. cool. No, my mom is not flown. Yes. But like, I also love pink, but she's, she's, I don't know if I can fly like that. Yeah. I don't know how she's singing whilst flying. Yeah. But, as dramatic as I can get with the staging, I'm down. All the, down all the theatrics. Try. Yeah, all the theatrics. Like a few years from now, I'm like, hey, look at me fly. Right. Yeah. We uh, we have a segment on the show called Under the Covers, where every night we feature different covers. musicians covering songs in their That's unique sick. take. And you, you've you been known to do covers, um, even your own your interpolations, obviously, with just a girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, What's a song that's like currently on the radio that you're like, you're singing along to in the car? Oh, so many. Besides Predator. Um, Yeah, just Predator. Yes, I that's only it. Si- only just sing on repeat. Predator. Huh. I feel like everyone's gonna say it, but just like Chaperone, and I and I knew I was a fan of hers years ago. You're pulling the. I'm the pulling I was it. a fan first. Just let, just let me I've been known. I've been known. Yeah. Um. Let me think. What else? What else is on? Is is maybe not even radio. What's the yeah, What's the song? Yeah, that, yeah. Do you ever soundtrack to covers? You know, I don't. Okay. But I've seen people do it, and yeah. I love watching them. I love Lady Gaga. Mm-hmm. Like first. First just dance it wasn't her first job, but the just dance era, out era yeah. and just recreating a song like that, I sure. think would be insane. I love you it. You know, yeah. She's another dramatic all in your, you know, face type. Well, when we get a performer. little more production budget <laughs> and you're back in Chicago or we'll travel there you, we will create the proper under the cover segment for Hayes Perfect. Warner to do just dance. That deal. 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 I'm ready. Hayes Warner. I'm thank ready. you for coming to Thank you so much. Crush it. Tomorrow. Thanks for having me. This studio is beautiful. Thank you. Like, thank you. I'm very proud A1. of it. A1. You can say that again to that camera. This studio is beautiful. And to that camera right there. This studio is stunning. All artists must come. If you're at Lollapalooza, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, no, you're yeah, amazing. You cut that one. <laughs> <I'm not>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's been a minute since we've done like a proper post spout podcast. Podcast. But here we are. I, I feel like I've seen Tamara Dia so many times in the last, like in person in the last like two months. And we haven't used any of that time to record the podcast when we're in the same room. It's because we're, we have so much to talk about. We forget. <laughs> we do. We just, yeah. Like just now you forgot to hit record. As we started. Uh, Tamara Dia, Eric Zachary, Spout Podcast, Post Podcast. Uh, let's jump into it right away. The VMAs, they have already faced kind of a couple um, hiccups. They originally announced it as September 10th. And then they realized that was the same night as the Democratic debate. So then they moved it back. Now it's 9-11 in New York, which, of course, everyone, yeah, that's a very meaningful date yes, in New correct. York. Um, they're actually, they're on a new location in Long Island, too. Oh. Uh, Tamara and I both being former MTV hosts. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot that goes into to the VMAs way earlier in the day and even the days leading up to it. I, I'm just imagining the headache that it's going to be trying to get up to Long Island. I mean, I'm kind of surprised, you know, like the whole thing was that they do it at Radio City Music Hall. That's part of the charm and the allure. So to take it out to Long Island, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing maybe Radio City Music Hall wasn't available that day. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was at uh, what was it, the forum when you and I went yeah, the first time in uh, and Los then Angeles. They moved it to Radio City Hall, or Radio City Music Hall, the next year, and then it was it's been in Brooklyn for a couple of years now, but oh. or not Brooklyn. It was in um, excuse me, uh, uh, Jersey. That's the place I'm thinking of. As I offend, uh, yeah, <laughs> all New Jersey. It's okay, they're used to it. <laughs> yeah. I side note, this is nothing to do with the VMAs, but I have never developed a hatred for a state more for no reason than I did to New Jersey when I moved to New York. It's just like automatically you're like, I have to not like you. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't make the rules. Here. Yeah. I don't know if they but. still call it this, but back in the day we used to refer to them as the bridge and tunnel crowd. So when you, oh my God. when you would go out, yeah. you'd be like, Oh, this place is so bridge and tunnel for people that don't live on that coast or haven't been there. It means you're either taking like the path in or. Yeah. In but or generally something. it's people from New Jersey, New Jersey that are coming in to party into New York. Um, yeah. Which I actually think Jersey gets a bad rap. There's really, it there's does. beautiful beaches really like in New Jersey. Jersey. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. And honestly, the view from Hoboken to the city is stunning. It's so gorgeous. So shout out to our Jersey friends. <laughs> I'm not going that far. You can say shout out to the yeah. uh, All right. Video Vanguard Did you date someone Award from Jersey? Recipient. I did, yes. Uh, Video Vanguard Award recipient, Katy Perry. Get it, getting announced, uh, she's going to be receiving, uh, you know, the award originally distinguished for Michael Jackson every year. It's basically their legacy honor, um, and it's it's always someone that supposedly not only dominated the music charts um, and MTV's charts, but also has been a pioneer in music videos. Now, Katie obviously has had a wild career. Yeah. Um, 
just not as of late. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's a putting putting I it mildly. It. I, Right. I mean, so like all the headlines are going, you know, she's also received the other highest award of the night, which is video music or video music video of the year. Uh, but that was for Firework in 2011. So that's so it's been a minute. Uh, that's like when the Grammys do best new artists and the artist has been around for a decade, which I'm assuming they're going right. to do with Sabrina Carpenter next year. But, um, exactly. you know, I think it's, it's a uh, give her that award in 2011. We are 13 years past that point. Um, you know, as you mentioned, she as of late, her career has not been doing very well. She released uh, two singles now off her new album. Neither one of them have performed great. There was a lot of controversy with this new album because she chose to work with Dr. Luke, um, Mm -hmm. as a, a a woman in the industry that, that was a, that was a choice. So, you know, um, I, I grew up loving Katy Perry. I think she's had some really epic moments. I do think that she is deserving of a video Vanguard from MTV because of her past achievements. However, she is a, she needs to, she needs something different. Like I, whatever. She just, no, she needs what she did before. She needs to go back to teenage dream. Yeah. I don't know. I I'm all for artists experimenting and working outside of, you know, what's comfortable, but she's been doing that for a decade and it hasn't caught. So can we go back? Just give us teenage dream part two. That's all we need. Um, yeah. Woman's world. That was the the song you were referring to yeah. a lot of the backlash. Um, she was saying it was all tongue in cheek of how women are viewed in the industry and, and in the world, but it didn't really come off that way, especially when you're working again with Dr. Luke, who is facing uh, several allegations from many people, namely Kesha. Right. Uh, and then this most recent music video that came out for a lifetime, uh, she's being investigated by Spanish authorities yeah. because <laughs> they didn't get the proper or they're claiming that they didn't get the proper, um, you know, what do you call uh, permits? Uh, uh, permits thank yeah. you that's the word i'm looking for uh for one of the beaches because it's an environmentally protected beach and the Katy perry's team and the capital team is like well we got a verbal agreement uh, they said we could do it which i'm not throwing any shade whatsoever because i've been part of those production crews where mm-hmm. you got to make it happen you're running gun. you got a call of someone that says yeah. yes you it's always easier to apologize and beg for forgiveness exactly. than just ask for permission yeah I understand that. It's just I find it personally very funny um, in the midst of, of a rollout that's not going, obviously, the way she wants her new album, 143, a.k.a. I love you. Uh, my T9 keyboard people know what's up. Uh, that's coming out on <laughs> T9. September 20th. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> yeah, of course. That was like uh, back in the day when you had to go boom, boom, boom just to do one letter. You had to tap it yeah. three or four times. I was so good at ABC. that on my, my QWERTY keyboard. Right, Cordy is that what it's called? I think Cordy was the one after. Uh, okay, um, not here to tech, you know, shame you at all, Tamara. I've already done that enough trying to get this to uh, yeah. start recording. Uh, yeah. um, but yeah, this, so obviously she's doing the video Vanguard Award. What's cool about that is usually you perform your best hits in a whole medley mm-hmm. of, um, you know, Justin Timberlake. Honestly, that was one of my favorite years ago when he brought out NSYNC. That was the big yeah. reunion. Uh, Missy Elliott did it yeah. not too long ago. I forgot who last year's was. Do you remember? I don't know, but I will. As you can tell, we haven't been employed by MTV yeah, for a few recently. years. Yeah. Uh, yes. So I will say Katy Perry has some bangers and if she's. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I love her songs, yeah. just not the bad ones. Yeah. Fair. I think that that could go for any artist, really. Uh, but yes. she, I think it'll be a great performance. She's still got it. You know what I mean? It's just this yeah. new music is not resonating. And I don't think the rollout is resonating. Uh, if I were her, I would. I scrap a lot of people on my team and start fresh and try and save what's left of this album. It hasn't dropped yet, so it could still be saved. Um, I, I would, I would even do a different producer, but what do I know? <laughs> I love that. If you look at her social media, I mean, obviously that's anyone's team prompting them. They just like, don't acknowledge it. Don't do anything, but she's having the best album rollout for, for one, four, three. She's jumping out of helicopters uh, with Orlando Bloom. Uh, she's having her daughter, Daisy, making a rare appearance, signing vinyls with her saying the smallest member of KP, our team KP is signing some lucky vinyls too. Um, and it's just like, let's not acknowledge it at all. You know, who's doing a really good job of not acknowledging what's in the news is Justin Timberlake. He has uh, moved on. Uh, Tamar and I went to his first show after yeah. the DUI allegations. Now he's claimed not guilty in court and he's just, frolicking around Europe, back on social media, posting like crazy. We, we kind of, like, we knew that was going to blow over. Oh yeah, you know, someone else who's not acknowledging a very big whirlwind of a storm around them right now is Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. They've kind of just pushed forward too. But I feel like every time I open TikTok or any social media app, it's a, 
they're they're trying to they're trying to cancel them. So you know, I think yeah. obviously that's their PR, letting them know whether or not they should respond at all. I think in certain situations you should respond. I think Katy Perry should not say anything. She doesn't want right. to bring bad energy to her rollout. I think they just they just need to make a shift. I don't think they need to talk about the shift. I think they just need to make it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know that people are trying to cancel Ryan Reynolds as much as Blake. It's, right. it's more Blake specifically, which has to be very difficult for her, right? Yes. Um, you have one of the most arguably likable, funny guys in Hollywood yeah. that also has like one of the biggest movies out right now of his own with the with biggest Deadpool opening for an rated R movie ever. Ever of all time. Yeah. Did you see it? Yeah, I did. Did you see it? I, I mean, it opens with with NSYNC, Bye Bye Bye. I know, so yeah. You, you were first fan. person in line, I'm sure. I was, my, well, I took my dad Did too, you put your and, Deadpool and, you suit know, on and, and jump out into the... No, I didn't put my Deadpool <laughs> suit on. I'm not a Marvel guy like that. <laughs> I know, no, you're uh, an, an NSYNC, NSYNC guy. Like that. That's what I'm saying, because you're an NSYNC guy. I thought you would get in, in, into the uh, the character. Oh, no, no, I'm the one having tech issues. D- I literally unplugged my own headphones. Dance pool. <laughs> dance pool that's all i came back to i unplugged my own headphone i couldn't you came back with perfect timing (laughs) right um moving on uh, in terms of releases actually there's one more thing i do want to get your opinion on real fast for the vmas because they they put out um song of the year nominees let's listen i want to see if we can't pick one or agree on one right now so i'm going to read them off to you i assume you don't know them offhand not all of them no okay uh beyonce texas hold'em that's fair jack harlow loving on me which i feel like that came out Last, last year, year? but I, maybe it was one of those like right on the cusp or the it's like since the last VMAs kind of thing. Yeah, but, that, that uh, does great song. I just don't think it's song of the year, not for this year. Kendrick Lamar, not like us, huge contender. Uh, yeah. Sabrina Carpenter, Espresso, huge yeah. contender. But then you have a few of their, I'm like, okay, these are just there because of the fans. Uh, Taylor Swift and Post Malone, Fortnite. Yeah. Love Taylor, love Post Malone and his new album. We'll talk about that in a second. There's no world where Fortnite is song of the year. No way. I'll be honest. That was, I mean, that wasn't even the best song on the album. <laughs> I, seriously. Uh, Teddy Swims, Lose Control. I love that he's in that I, category. Yeah. He's just not. I mean, I love Teddy and I love yeah. that, that song. I, it's a powerhouse vocal of a song, but it's just not song of the year i think you're 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 really going between texas hold'em not like us not like us and espresso yeah and even yeah i would say i think you're right those are the three main contenders is that all in the category that's it yeah what are you picking uh i probably i mean i guess it depends but i would say not like us because not like us was such a cultural juggernaut that went right. not only, I mean, actually, I would, I would say like a global juggernaut. Um, nor, right. Normally, as you know, I would go for Beyonce. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think in terms of like a cultural shift that happened, uh, I mean, you can't really top not like us. Right. What about you? Yeah, I think Beyonce would have had it had this not happened. Um, if they're going from a pop standard, which is, you know, they tend to lead a little more to the pop song mm-hmm. sometimes. That's where Espresso obviously dominated the air charts. Sure. Uh, but if they're really going for the video music award for, you know, song of the year, then that should be not like us, hands down, no questions asked. Yeah. But. Well, also, if we're in that, if we're going to be that technical, there's no music video for Texas Hold'em, right? There was no. I don't think so. There was visuals, but yeah, there was never an official. So if, video. if it's a video music award, I mean, I don't know. Song of the year. Yeah. There's video of the year and song of the year, but yeah. it's at the video music award. So I feel like they should all be considering. Beyonce, the, like, give us our song. visuals. <laughs> She'll probably drop it like the night before too, just because that's something that she would do. Totally. Um, <laughs> speaking of dropping, moving on. Post Malone, F1 Trillion. This is the country album that we knew was in the works. We've been hearing about it. The amount of collaborations on this album is insane. What I love is that, you know, we just got it a couple days ago. Uh, it's 18 songs in total. Virtually every single song has multiple writers on it. And not mul- not just writers. Like we're talking Heavy hitters. Hank Williams Jr. Wow. is on this. Dolly Parton wow. is on this. Tim McGraw is on this. Brad Paisley is on this. You don't have to be a country fan to know the levity of which those names hold in the country music world. Yeah, so I don't know if you know this, but I saw Post Malone in 2013 or 14 at South by Southwest. Oh. This is before White Iverson dropped. Um, so I walked into one of the South by Southwest performances. It was a very small bar, maybe like 50 people in this bar and post Malone was performing and it was just him on stage with the guitar. 
And he was very folk music at that time. So mm-hmm. it, it, the when he popped out with White Iverson, I was like, oh, this guy is great. And it took me a while to put two and two together. That was the same artist that I had seen a year previous as a folk singer. So a lot of people online, there's like the, the conversation that's going on about artists that tack onto hip hop music to blow up. And then once they get big, they go back to you know, quote unquote, their roots or country music or whatever it is. Um, And in this case, I think a lot of people don't know that he did start in that genre of folk and country. And it's kind of his circling back to that. Um, So not surprising that Post Malone would get artists of that stature on his album. He's a huge artist. He's super talented. Um, And again, like it's this this wave of these artists moving into the the country genre. What, What are your thoughts on that? Um, again, I, I, I was going to defend him, but we were saying the same mm-hmm. thing. Basically, you know, he's been doing this since day one, uh, White Iverson. And then I think a lot of people got, um, congratulations was their introduction to mm-hmm. him. Um, and then obviously blew up from there, but you know, he, uh, he, he's always been very melodic, even with his hip hop leaning songs, even when he's rapping, it's always melodic singing or spoken word, as opposed to like you know, actually proper rapping. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't shock me that he would lean this way. And, and But I mean, well, for what it's worth, I don't know if you scrubbed the album or not. It's it's very country. It is a proper country album. It cannot be contested. It is not like, oh, it's another person trying to do country mm-hmm. to appease country fans. Like this is a proper country album. Uh, in addition to all of the people on it too, uh, he then go ahead and, goes ahead and su- surprise releases another nine additional songs for the long bed version of F1 Trillion, Disc 2, which I love. That's bringing that back to me, the idea of Disc 1, Disc 2. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are nine solo songs. It's like, just in case people are going to be like, hey, of course these are country because you have a major country heavyweight on this. He's going, okay, well, then here's nine by myself. Yeah. I also love that he's bringing back the old school album length because I feel like now we're in this era where people drop eight to 10 songs or two and a half minutes, and it just feels very... uh, Manu- like fakely manufactured. I don't even know how else to say that, but it just feels very like... Yeah, it's not as authentic as it used to yeah, be. Yeah, um, it doesn't feel... You know, I... Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, it doesn't feel like the artistry is there anymore. It feels like mm-hmm. they're just creating music for for virality. So this feels like stripping back to like the musicality of what they actually do, which I appreciate. It's the authenticity of the long form. We've yeah. had this conversation, you and I, Tam, mm-hmm. even in our world too. It's do we want to do that quick 30 second, here's what's happening with Blake Lively sure. and, the, and Justin, or do you actually want to have an extended conversation about something and, and go through the facts and do, have the journalis- journalistic re- integrity behind it? There's no right or wrong way to do it because at the end of the day, whoever's seen it and if eyes are on it, then you know that there's different ways to measure success. Yep. Um, but I am getting very uh, fatigued on the, here's 19 different solo singles. Yeah. <laughs> and then eventually once they're all out, because they've come out every six weeks, it's just, we're going to call it an album. They don't have any through line whatsoever. Yeah. There's no like official album artwork because there's been 19 different pictures mm-hmm. uh, to each their own. It it's obviously was manufactured to appease people who have a shorter attention span. I do think that um, at some point the industry, both from media uh, visuals and also from you know, the music industry has to give the listeners a little more credit. Like, hey, let's stop yeah. assuming people don't have an attention span. Let's stop assuming that you can't wrap your head around more than three songs having a through line. Right. And I think we're finally back on that that backswing on the pendulum, which I'm very excited about. Yeah, same. <laughs> really expected you to say more. <laughs> I mean, you said it. Like, there's, there's a normal, if I wanted to argue with you, I would have definitely done <laughs> No, it's great. I just, I'm usually not, I'm not used to Tamara Dia agreeing with me. So ah, that's, that's not true. <laughs> that's, I guess, what's happening. Uh, and then uh, two more stories. Um, one from me, and then I, I know you had one too, Tam. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ed Sheeran, I think this is, this is quick. This is just yeah. cool. Um, Ed Sheeran, who's been a longtime football fan, obviously, mm-hmm. he grew up in England, specifically um, in, uh, uh, what is it? it oh, God, uh, Ipswich. Um, the Ipswich town he uh the football club he's officially purchased what he claims to be a small percentage of but they did a whole campaign rollout i'm sure he's a little more integral than than he's leading on yeah um, well i mean yeah they call it a minority to be able to not only buy a, a football team but also one that's literally your hometown heroes yeah. that's incredible huge yeah i mean he's he's a minority owner so that's a common thing we, we've been seeing it a lot lately uh, kevin durant sure. just uh 
became a minority or owner of a football team. We know uh, LeBron James is doing it as well. So LeBron James is a much bigger team. It's Liverpool. So <laughs> much larger uh, team over there. But yeah, very cool for, you know, just growing up being such a huge fan of a place. Your family's a huge fan of a club. And then you're like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it. <laughs> like goals. I do love that he's leaning into the the sportsmanship of it already. Because as you were saying, minority owners, you have Rob McElhenney and, right. um, and Ryan, Ryan Reynolds. Reynolds own a part of Wrexham. Mm -hmm. And he already called them out and said, bring it, boys. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, it's probably so fun for them. You know, like if I was rich, that's what I'd be doing, too. I'd be like buying up teams and then just talking smack to all my other friends that have teams. <laughs> if you could be a minority owner of any team, any sport, what would it be? Uh, I would probably do football as well. I would do Manchester City just because they win and we like winners. Uh, and then obviously as an L.A. girl, uh, a Lakers minority owner would be pretty, pretty freaking cool. That's pretty sick. What about you? This is a cool like mic drop. Real yeah, fast. and the Lakers. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Exactly. Bulls. Um, Bulls. Chicago Bulls. Yeah. I have to be. Yeah. It's a it's a dynasty that we'll hang on to forever. That I don't know that will ever bounce back. But you know, my mom was a cheerleader for them. Yeah. Which, my dad's a basketball player. I grew up as a Bulls fan in the '90s era, Michael Jordan era. Like, yeah. that would be cool to to be a part of it if they're winning. It's my favorite fun fact about your family is that your mom was a former Bulls cheerleader during the Michael Jordan era. I literally tell everyone, like anytime like I'm with Eric. You tell more people I know, than I I think it's so cool. Literally, I like meeting someone. Eric is actually, I'm like, by the way, did you know that his mom? I think just Forget <laughs> he was my co-host yeah. on TRL. Did you know his mom cheered with Michael? Porter, I just Michael such, Jordan. it's so awesome. Like it's a, like, if I were her, I'd be wearing that like on a sign above my head everywhere. It's my dad's screensaver. On his as phone. it should be. Actually, her, if I was record, your mom, very concerning as a son to have to open his phone and see. That. <laughs> if I was your mom, I'd be wearing that, that cheerleader uniform everywhere. Be like, yep. Yeah. Please don't give it. Yeah, do I'm it. <laughs> Mom's yeah. hot and take. Finally, I know you have a, a Doja Cat story, Tim. I do. So, uh, I mean, like everyone else in the world, I am uh, here for the tea. So Tamara's tea corner. Welcome. Um, so the, the, the news is, is that Doja Cat is now dating Stranger Things star Joseph Quinn, uh, which might seem like very out of left field to a lot of people. But if you will recall, about two years ago, she was on Twitter and she tweeted, Joseph Quinn is so effing hot. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then she apparently slid into Noah Schnapp's DM, who is one of the stars of Stranger Thing, and basically right. was like, yo, hook it up. What's up with your boy, Joyce Joseph Quinn? But Noah posted that DM on his story, and then they got into a fight over that. But There's a whole like backlash of like, why would you out me like this? Yes, exactly. Well, clearly Joseph Quinn reached out to her because the two have been spotted multiple times canoodling. Oh, great word. Canoodling it's in this, London. It's the the um the kelsey story too you talk mm -hmm. about it and you speak it into an existence yeah like, oh man i wish i could have seen taylor swift and give her a you know friendship bracelet yeah. now they're dating yeah you know? man i wish i could uh see the theo james and marry him <laughs> theo james is he's your go -to? he's so hot <laughs> oh my God. well it used to be chris evans but how do you go from Chris Evans to Theo James? Because I, I recently watched uh, White Lotus. Oh, wait, hang on. I was thinking Theo Vaughn. That's why oh. I was very oh confused. Oh, my God. No, Theo Vaughn. That's why I was confused. <laughs> I was like, Theo James is super hot. What are you talking about? <laughs> Theo oh my Vaughn. God. Oh, my God. I feel like, I mean, he's funny, but that would be a Bud Light wedding if I could ever picture one. <laughs> uh, that's I don't even know if that's, that's Bud Light. That's like old style. Or, or uh, <laughs> Natty Ice. Natty Ice. Yeah, Natty, Natty Ice. Ice. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> um, that there's nothing that's gonna get that picture Theo of Vaughn. You oh my god, and Theo Vaughn out of my head. I hope I uh, hope so. the audience knows who Theo Vaughn is. Yeah, because... we'll we'll leave it. There. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so. Funny. Uh, hopefully, uh, Doge is doing well. We wish her well, and that's cool to speak of something in existence. And yes. Just basically forget DMs. Just say you want someone, and then boom, poof. Yeah. Magic uh, genie. Oh my gosh, it would be so horrible if a million dollars were to just fall on me. Right. It would be so crazy yeah. if I just found a wife in love. That's yeah. insane. I know, right? Uh, could, the stranger right. things have happened, <clears throat> but um, boom. Oh God! Do you like that? <laughs> yeah, All right. On that note, on that high note, we'll end this uh, entertainment segment turned therapy session. Uh, Tam, I love you. I appreciate love you. Too. you. <laughs> we'll talk to you soon. Bye.